Hello, Dumelang Sanbonani, South Africa. A very warm welcome to Expressions. This is definitely the place for you to air your views. I'm your host, Jacqueline Mapala. Sinbengele Snamgele, and I'm your host, Dumgole Siwaga Masango. This is again Koma from our headquarters in Auckland Park, Johannesburg. Now, we have wrapped up Heritage Month yesterday. Go to again on Expressions. We continue with the conversations. Namkanjik Sekhwa, we tackle the issue of indigenous languages. Our poll question, is South Africa failing to preserve indigenous languages? Um, God, that's a very important question because language is closely related to identity. Yet more than 30% of grade one pupils are still not taught in their home languages. Now, 75% of schools in South Africa have implemented a policy of mother tongue teaching in the foundation phase in the first three years of school. Now, the idea is to help the children become literate in their mother tongue and learn basic literacy skills in their home languages. Well, Xenja Logwe, Jackie, as expressions, we took to the streets just to find out what about this. Do take a look at this. Sanbonani, Dumelang, Moloeni, a very good hello to you, South Africa, and welcome to yet another exciting episode of Expressions. And the question on the tip of our tongues today is, is bringing in indigenous languages a good way to preserve our cultures and heritage, especially by introducing that into schools? If we call ourselves a rainbow nation and we say we are diverse, I think um, we should be introducing that into schools. And it's more about our pride and instilling pride in our nations and instilling, um, giving us, uh, shaping our, our, our identity. I think it's a good idea because like if they teach us indigenous language you know where you come from mm -hmm. and if you have to communicate with a fellow African person mm -hmm. it's easier to talk to them rather than using English. It helps us to communicate effectively mm -hmm. in schools and everybody and be able to understand each other when we talk different languages. English is portrayed as a uh, business language it is but then we also need to remember where we come from our home languages and all these languages, our ancestral languages, they are very important. So I think we need to incorporate both, not forgetting the other or taking English as a superior language. Indigenous languages are very important. Some of those very important comments from young people on the streets. But to help me take this discussion further, I'm joined in studio, in studio by Lufuna Ndlovo, who is the acting head, at least the acting head of languages at the Pan South African Language Board. And I'm also joined by Homo Lemamonye, who is the founder of SP Language Academy. Lady and gentlemen, welcome to Expressions. Thank you very much. Very I'm true. sure Mubukai is wondering, like, what's happened to the studio? We decided to change things up tonight, and I hope you're obviously mm. going to enjoy what we have to offer for you in terms of the discussion that we're having tonight. Khumulam, uh, I think maybe let me start with you. I think my, my first question is around why is it important to prioritize and to preserve our languages? I mean, you run a, a school where you are teaching young people indigenous languages. Why is it important? So you can't say you're of a culture and not know the language. You cannot separate language from culture. So it's very important, very crucial for children to be able to understand and speak their home languages. It is also important for them to know where they come from. I mean, we're talking about heritage. Heritage is something that you inherit from somewhere. So you ought to know where does it come from, yeah. how it began, and how do we translate it from one generation to another. Look, it, 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 it sounds nice when Khumulma is talking about, you know, like we must, you know, uh, have some pride in, in, in our indigenous languages. But I mean, uh, why aren't indigenous languages in South Africa given the same value and importance as you see with English? I mean, you hear young people, Ratsekhana, hey, when, when you can't speak uh, English properly, but there's no sense of pride in being able to be proficient and adept, adept in terms of speaking your language. Why is that the case? Yeah, I think uh, it is precisely because of uh, the history that we come from, where English has been dominating and has been actually regarded as an, a language of business and as a language that uh, actually people would have to advance their careers. However, it is pleasing to note that uh, in South Africa, in terms of leg legislative prescripts, there, is, there are a lot that are enabling we have created an enabling atmosphere, but the problem is the reluctance and we failure to embrace this. Mm -hmm. So what is left is to, for us to instill that element of pride. Mm. 
And, yeah. and, and talking about Pride Homolemo, um, who exactly is, is failing us in this cause? Mm -hmm. when, when we're talking about young people specifically taking, uh, or at least having a sense of pride, a sense of uh, a feeling like, you know, this is something that, that means something to us. Who's failing them? Is it the parents? Are the parents encouraging their children enough to speak, you know, their, 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 their mother tongues? Yeah. Well, I would say firstly it would be society. Our society has, you know, has made English to be so predominant. And like you said, if you don't, if you don't speak English well, we laugh at you. So I would say society needs to change to a certain extent where, you know, not being able to speak English is okay. And you being able to speak your, your home language is actually a good thing. And it's more fashionable. And, you know, some people are trying. You get musicians who are trying. You get rappers who are, you know, taking it out there. But it's actually not enough for society to just change on its own. We also need the government to come in and make sure that each child is taught their home language from a young age, you know, he spoke about influence and mm -hmm. influence is best um, materialized when it starts from a young age. Mm -hmm. So we you need to start these children young so that tomorrow we've got a generation with a different perspective, people who are actually proud mm -hmm. of, you know, of speaking their home languages. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get the older generations, they're actually the ones that are struggling a bit with, you know, uh, accepting the fact that it's best to speak your home language. I would also say parents mm -hmm. amongst themselves, you know, in their social circles, they always happy that mm -hmm. you know instead of saying it would be so great yes, if I could communicate yes. with my child yes. in our home language yes uh, and, and if I want to bring you in here I mean we know that Dr. Shezi Guji who was who wrote his PhD in Sikosa right mm -hmm. which was groundbreaking if, yeah. if you think about it mm -hmm. I mean what role do such contributions sort of play in helping to develop language but I think most importantly making sure that language is part of our knowledge systems and our knowledge productions in our country mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, that is groundbreaking, like you indicated, uh, precisely because we come from a history where African languages were taught in English. So this actually uh, puts our languages at a level that we all require because uh, it has always been argued that we do not have enough terminology, we do not have mm. actually enabling terminology, but actually that PhD piece proves a point. Mm. So our languages, as indicated, are enabling. Mm -hmm. yes. and, 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 and I love that because it means that our languages, I mean, they matter, they have value, they have they importance. Do. If somebody they can do. write a, a course of PhD, Absolutely. I mean, it yeah. also says that we're yeah. moving in the right direction. I think, Homolema, for you, I mean, you know that there's a huge push right now towards STEM, which is your science, technology, engineering, and maths. Is it realistic to think that learners can be taught mathematics, engineering, and technology in their mother tongues? Is, is that a realistic goal for us to set for ourselves? Yeah. You know, in as much as it can be done in English, in as much as in other countries they do it in their, in their languages, it is very much possible. I mean, currently there's a technology dictionary that's being derived, you know, in, in different languages. It's, it's, they're probably on the fourth language now. So it is very possible. We've got educated people. We've got professors who are putting their heads together and actually making this possible. I mean, you look at most of the languages, um, they've got words like ma'adingwa, words that are borrowed from other languages. So when it come to technology those words can be incorporated and made suitable for you know for studying those languages so it is possible um, there are people who are experts in putting that together for us to share with the children and everyone else yeah again you know all of this sounds great you know uh, but let me bring you back in okay how do we um get young people to have an appetite for it, you know? Uh, and you touched a little bit on the role of the arts and the media. I mean, Konano, we're celebrating Boshoma Jolzi. You're having people like, you know, Casper Nyovest, you know, rapping in his, in his own mother tongue. I mean, what is your role, I think, in terms of, you know, the organization that you represent to just creating or at least encouraging that appetite among young people to say, actually, it's cool, you know, mm -hmm. to speak Isizulu, Sepedi, mm -hmm. well and brilliantly. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have been actually in, in a campaign uh, to try and bring uh, young people more on, onto this. So one other thing that is so exciting in South Africa is that we have uh, established and discovered that young people are too much into creative writing. And then we see this being displayed in social media, although being displayed in English. So. Uh, what we are trying to bring is to workshop them, 
uh, in their talents, uh, especially in the area of creative writing, so that they write more in their indigenous languages. We have also established that the publishing market in South Africa is highly commercialized such that it becomes difficult to penetrate that market and they want to penetrate it in their English writing. So we are creating an enabling atmosphere mm -hmm. so that at least they can be able to express themselves creatively through their own languages. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Komalume, SP Language Academy, maybe talk to us a little about uh, the various indigenous languages that you teach, but I think the issue around capacity, because I mean, that would have been maybe my follow-up qu question to say, look, we live in a diverse country, 11 official <laughs> languages. <laughs> Is it practical for us to say, no. we will teach our kids in whatever language <laughs> right, that is required? So how do you do it in your academy? Okay, so currently at the academy, we've got seven languages. And this is because we um, we bring in the languages as per the demand. So we won't have, for example, um, Xhosa currently, because we don't have children who want to do Xhosa. They're only going to enroll for next year. Um, realistically speaking, um, we cannot do it on our own. You know, and then as much as we're, we're speaking about making it popular and bringing it in, I think we also forget the private schools. In private school, it's where they actually need it. So we're trying to get into the schools um, tr so that they can have it as an extramural activity, which is our first, you know, step into it. It would be great to open a lot of campuses, but then again, it wouldn't be, you know, exactly feasible. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to get into the schools because we believe if we get into the schools, then we'll, we'll touch a lot of children. We're also um, working on going digital um, mm. for those children who cannot make it on a Saturday. So mm. um, in terms of scaling, it would have to go the digital way and getting into the schools. Man, Homan, you're giving us a sense of hope when it comes to preserving and basic, basically just prioritizing our languages and go. I mean, I'm just blown over, blown yep. over. Yep, and it's given us so much food for thought for the second segment because we're going to be joined by a Suzulu writer and poet, Sabelo Sogo, is going to be speaking to us about this very important issue. Very excited. So much has came out of this conversation. We have exactly. rappers who are changing the landscape. Exactly. So I'm so excited exactly. to my segment. So <laughs> Mubukhani, make sure you stay with us. You're watching Expressions. We'll be back right after this. We're still on the issue of language and many would say that English and Africans are still dominant in the classroom environment. Just want to get your, your feel on what you think when you think Africans and writing an essay or an entire exam in Africans today in 2019. I don't think we should still use Africans as our second or first additional languages in schools because most of the people don't understand it. And now, if we are going to use Afrikaans as our first additional language or our second addi additional languages at schools, then it definitely means that we can't interact in our own languages. So I would love the Le Bone language yaka elensisu to ikhona ozibala ko di tutonza kwabo because no, he restricted in a way u two languages kwabo eleng English le Afrikaans. If we even say no, we're communicating in English, it's a universal language, why can't we have a universal African language? Why aren't we even in speaking in Swahili, for example? Or why don't we have a universal South African language? You know, Why are we having a universal language that is not even African? <laughs> Interesting views there. Now, is South Africa failing to preserve indigenous languages? Now, that is the big question. So, welcome back. You're still with Expressions. This is your hashtag number one youth current affairs show. Now, joining me to further dissect this matter as well is Osabe Losogo, who's a Zulu poet as well as performer. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Sabe, now I've got a problem. You know, as we've also heard in the first segment, we are in an era right now where someone's level of intelligence is judged by you know and that is actually a problem because we've seen how that has filtered through so many spheres of society in our churches in our mm -hmm. schools you know and it's even in our homes now what is it that needs to be done to ensure with the to actually speak their languages um personally i i come from a town at the end of mpumalanga mm beginning of KZN, just next to Swaziland, right? So my mother took me to a multiracial school or the former 
Model C schools. And I did English and Afrikaans as, as the two languages that I was doing. And then I would always come back home and speak Isi Zulu because that's what people of that area speak. By the time I matriculated, I was first language English speaking and second language Afrikaans. And Isi Zulu was something floating. I mm. um, got to Joe work, did the arts. And I think over time, um, I found myself then asking myself to say, what is it that I'm really trying to say to the world? Mm right, as a writer. And in asking myself those questions, you then find that there are things that I'm unable to properly get to in the English language. Then it requires that I go back to start asking myself to say, if I am really trying to connect, let's say, the idea of saving money for a kid as they come into the, to the planet, right? So let's say I am not working, my partner is not working, and then suddenly a baby is born. Um, so before there would be invimba that would have to be paid or in or whatever it is that would be called depending on his good. So in my not understanding what in is or invimba is um, and where does that culture come from, right? It becomes problematic for me to immediately connect with the idea. So then I had to go back, start asking around the people that I grew up with, elders specifically, to say that because I was trying to deal with this in situation, to say, where do we come from with this thing? So then you find that you will get told that in the language, it's actually imvimbandala, mm -hmm. right? Um, so which is why there would be a cow, and that cow must be specifically in comments, so that it is able to be milked for the kid, so that it's able to multiply for the sake of the kid that's coming through. But then over time, because we lose language, we lose who we are. In Taulo has become whatever it has become today, where now you are talking damages for the sake of damages. Whereas if you go back to the originality of the thing, you would find that it was only thinking of the person that's coming onto the planet. So I think for me, in finding that out, I then told myself that maybe there is a lot that I could actually find out just by solely just coming closer to the language. Now, as a writer, I'm mm. sure, you know, there's this saying that if you're a writer, you can't really produce if you don't consume. True. Uh, speak to me about some of the works that you, you know, consume in order to draw inspiration from. Right. Um, so, point of coming in, I was raised on LCPC Izulu stories, right? So, theater of the mind begins playing there. Um, and then growing up, going to the school that I went to, I had already gotten foundation phase of Izulu which is Masihan Bisane for the sake of Masihan Bisane. By the time I went to the multiracial school where mm -hmm. English and Afrikaans became predominant, um, I was still able to read in Sizu, mm -hmm. right? So in Sizu, in Sizu became one of the first books that I picked up when I said to myself in 2015 that I'm going back to this mm -hmm. language. inspirations Now, I want to know from you, mm -hmm. Jobas heavily in Gulomo on indigenous languages and why they need to be preserved. You know, we are speaking to Abandabasho or watching expressions uh -huh. right now who tweet and, and Facebook in, in Isengesi. Mm -hmm. um, what conversations should they be having amongst themselves? I think Kumbalulegi Lugu Ibuzu, Kashashen Kamgab. And what, what is the reason for my being on the planet, right? So you find that in our poetic forms that we have always had, Gune Ibongelelo, that just come through besides the Itangazel, right? Ut Ukonugu is Landa, when in Vela Piago, which is something that speaks to you as a person, right? Now, in understanding myself, it then becomes easy for me to step up to the world, mm -hmm. right? So I think, I think young people should be asking themselves more than anything to say, who are we, where do we come from? And in that, language becomes part and parcel of that because it carries who we are. All right. Okay. So, of course, let's just quickly uh, check in with our expression for this week. Please roll it for me. Do we have it? Okay, let's quickly just go through to our Facebook pages quickly. Siriso says, I believe it's only because there are too many languages in South Africa, so English is the language that accommodates everybody. The Mashesha says, simply because it's a language that's spoken worldwide in this poetic term, it's a universal language as usually referred to in order to build an understanding for different people who don't speak or understand their own language. In Bugeli now, I do make sure we are when we return remember to tell a friend to tell a friend that expressions is now shown back after this
Welcome back. You're still watching Expressions, your number one youth current affairs show here on SABC One. We are talking about indigenous languages in South Africa, and we're asking you a very important question to say, is South Africa failing to preserve indigenous languages in our country? Now, of course, we're going to have to wrap this conversation up, Holmulemo uh, and Lufuno, but I think just some parting shots, uh, Lufuno, from, especially from the organization that you come from. Yeah. Uh, again, how do we preserve uh, our, our mother tongues? How do we make sure that they're front and center of, of where this country is moving as a whole? Of course, as indicated earlier, that will be through our writings, which young people are more into, but through English. But this time around, through our languages, because our languages matter. Uh, we have actually taken strides as the Pan South African Language Board in also bringing young people in the structures of our, our languages, because for each language, we have got a national language structure, a national language body, wherein we have tried to bring more young people so that at least this could also be reflected even more in the social media platforms mm -hmm. which we encourage young people more into this. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely possible. I mean, when you think about Afrikaans, which is like the youngest language, they wrote poetry in, mm -hmm. in Afrikaans, they sang in yes. Afrikaans, and it became part and parcel of the society and was inculcated in every aspect of society. And I think for you, Humulemo, I mean, for young people are like, yeah, expressions, indigenous <laughs> languages, mother tongue. Maybe explain to them, what is the advantage of them being proficient and adept in, the, in their mother tongues? The best thing a person can do is to be able to learn their mother tongue because when you're being taught something in your mother tongue, the understanding becomes better. So when you say something to me in a different language, I can hear it. But when you say it to me in my mother tongue, I can understand it. That is why sometimes you find that when your mom is like shouting at you, she will say it in your mother tongue because you best express yourself in that. And whatever that you want to say comes out as accurate as you wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. And it's just a good thing. Mm -hmm. You can come down to other people's levels. Mm -hmm. You can be relevant everywhere. Mm -hmm. that, it doesn't matter whom you're speaking to, at yeah. what level, in what community. Yeah, I'm cool. Can you help me? All right. Oh, of course, we've had a very great conversation. We have to thank you so much. And of course, Bugini Lapikai, just before we go, we did ask you, is South Africa really failing to preserve indigenous languages? Let's have a look at the poll results. Do we have the poll results? Do we have? Yes, about 60% of you you said yes and about 40% said no. So clearly still a lot needs to be done with Jackie. Wow. wow, I've enjoyed having this conversation. Exactly, I'm exactly. Stella, Stella show. Go. Mm -hmm. And of course, Mbugin Lapikai, we have to thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kandik Sikhwa. Sabelo Sogo plays us out. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for watching. Bye. Let's go. Inkomo yengubo kayiko nentlau Saya to la galang in tant. Labo figan in tela baquine gong. A mangoon. A masico. Um sab. Is in bande zisweli kaya. Uyantan tum Africa a kalel. Nia call wamina. Uyatandas. Isimos kutazu call. Sikata zuka kai, kwa sekaya, batine bakalengi nkulungwane. Ikuli li abanda, imali okshala bati renti ya shota, ngenyanga kumbe sesimbili, baya kia bapati mataitela, umafri kuzo lalabi. Ulalela ini, ikini iso noma izindaba, unembeza noma indala, usobu.